Ouch. They lost, they lost half the population when those missiles hit. Zeus's dog is here. Aw. <laughs> Turn him away from the screen. <laughs> uh, see, I hate it when that happens. I completely, you know, misjudged how much damage those missiles were going to do. There's a friend over us. Cats, apparently. Just go with people have strong opinions about other animals. <laughs> Even the nice ones are territorial. That is just that is how it is. All right, because they retreated, but that system was still, you know, to another system and planet, or to another to another planet in the system, is still blockaded. And we're going to need to move some Borathi here. So what survived? The spaceport survived. <sighs> well, let's get them assimilated sooner. And... Yeah, factory. Let's see. I guess, yeah, marine barracks. Do I need that, too? Then we'll start moving some uh, Borathi in. Biospheres. Yep, yep. Usual suspects. And missile base. All right. That's heading in. That's going to be more than enough to take care of some business there. If every time you barked at someone else, it turned out that person has their own pet, you can smell it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was like, yeah, deep down, you know, every every dog is a wolf and every cat is a tiger. At least they think they are. <laughs> okay, as we're getting closer to the Sakura border, I'm still getting a little nervous, but I think we'll be okay. And you got to remember, you got to keep in the back of our minds too. The Darlocks did declare war on us, and they are building up. So, I don't know how much of a threat they're actually going to be right now. I don't think they could take us, but Darlocks are pretty bad news. Yeah, they do have class three shields. They're about the same as we are on weapons tech. Yeah. Now they have that when that won't do us any good. Nano is pretty good. Yeah, I don't think they have. I don't think they have anything we want to steal. Uh, so I think we'll just leave, have our spies on defense. We'll just have one keep one keeping them honest, and we'll just replace them as as we lose them. Okay. So we got that, got that. Yeah, we'll just leave that ship there. All right, everything everything else looks pretty good, though. Okay, Star Base, Eku is blockaded. Yeah, we're going to have to wait for the blockade to break before we can do anything about that. Okay. So... Uh, man, yeah, as much as I want to get more ships in, our, our command points just won't support them. So I'll let that one finish, and we'll have... You focus on because a bunch more spies. Never have too many when you got Darlocks in play. All right. Yeah, so I have to just take care of the other Eku next turn. We still have three train. Oh, right, that's what I can do. We do spies. There's this. We're going to be going after Trilar sooner rather than later. We'll just do it that way. Oh, and they just pulled their cruiser back rather than rather than lose it in this fight. Here we go. Yep, we have a Santa gimmick going on since we're the space elves. <laughs> All right, this time I'll remember I have to actually deal with the battle station before we can do anything else. So let's see. They and they still just have fighters. Yep, they just have fighters. So we have those wait and start with you. Uh, Master Driver is so good. So why are why are our missiles so strong? Oh, because they have MERS. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. And then they have Class One shields. that's still doing the uh, twenty-four time. Yeah, okay, that makes a lot of sense. That's why we're that's why we're so overkill on planets. So I think I'll have them fire off one salvo on the planet, and then that'll be it. <laughs> Holiday cheer to every corner of the galaxy, whether they want it or not, exactly. <laughs> I like Chris Sprawl was saying, you know, we shower them with Christmas cheer, by which he means biological weapons. Okay. It's, oh, did they tech up? Or no, it's just the battle stations have more structure and thus more thus more drive. Alright. Like I said, we're gonna do one 
one salvo from our destroyers on the planet, but not that second one. The second one is what did all that overkill uh, last time around. Nice, didn't even hit. Okay. So this these first guys will just go after yeah, let's go for the missiles. Oh. Escorts are so good. You know, one of the a lot of people have complaints about you know, dealing with stacks of missiles and stuff like that. Basically oh, that was not close enough. Drat. That's right, because I normally pull them behind the ships, not not uh, alongside. That's all right. Yeah, if you hand if you know how to handle them, they're not too bad. Let's get them real close. Nice. All right. And these ships have bomb. Yeah, obviously these bombs have ships. No, I had that right. The ships have bombs, so it's a good idea to pull, start moving them in. Okay. Of course, the fighter inter interceptors are pretty easy to destroy as it is. You don't really get any bonus points for that. Okay. Right. So we'll go ahead and yes, yeah, move. Let's see. I move them in. Um, one Merculite isn't going to do that much extra damage, so no harm there. There we go. I had a feeling that would work out. Yeah, so with half the systems gone, yeah, they've lost about half their guns, uh, some of their missiles, but no, well, because they don't have any structure to, to lose, really. Oh, was it like um, Star Trek Enterprise, I think, had the, you know, like reinforced armor offline because they hadn't, they needed their Technobabble uh, you know, reason to throw crew members off their out of their seats, but don't didn't have shields yet. So, okay. no problem there. And a matter of fact, let's because <laughs> they had thirty seven marines, and that's how they were able to hold on. <laughs> well, likewise, let's go ahead and get them in in position to start dropping those bombs. Here we go. And have the two. I think we just start clicking through turns. Okay. Oh yeah, how about I think I did it again. <laughs> I forgot how much damage these ships can do with their beams. I think the mass drivers might be enough to finish it off. Let's see, 400, hard to tell. They won't tell me exactly what we're looking at here. Um, not, yeah, not going to risk it. Let's not do any, any further damage. There we go. It's a little overkill, but yeah, not, not nearly as bad as last time. Are we, <laughs> Are we boarding a battle station about to get pounded by missile? Seems like a bad idea. Here's the funny thing: you you, you are assumed, I, I assume, to to blow up to, to blow up the space stations when you're done with them. Because you don't get to keep them. If you capture space station, it still goes away. Very very unfortunate. And yeah, the missiles are going at the planet, right? What are you going to do when Santa's elves run wild on you? <sighs> we got obsolete drive star trouble. Here we go. So basically, if you get armor barracks or the battleoids tech, you can build... Uh, they're only for protecting your planets. Uh, and they're, protecting, they're for protecting planets from ground invasion. And usually the AI will just bomb you to death. So, <laughs> a marginal tech, but the AI still likes it. So I'll see if I can trade that around. Astro University, good, good. Oh, it's ultra rich too, so we're gonna need to send some people there and make that one of our up and coming uh, shipyards. That'll do. <laughs> I was guessing you're getting space coal this year. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so this will be a prime planet for getting those gravity generators. That'll be a very strong system as soon as we get that going. Annihilate? No, we're gonna we're going definitely gonna need to get some extra people in here. Uh, what do we have? Pollution processor, spaceport, space space academy on a poor system. No, uh, biospheres factory. Okay, cool. Let's do control center. Reduce risk of revolt. Barracks for free troops, and let us keep the ones we have garrisoned uh, safely. And then 
They already have factories, so a Roadrunner plant and then everything else. Lab. Ah, we're gonna, we're gonna be leaving this one to do further damage. So as soon as we're done with, with infrastructure, yeah, we're gonna get our missile base, radiation shield, and then, then, fin then, fin then let them finish up. Actually, we'll get the supercomputer first. This should be a pretty productive plant in short order because even though it's poor, it's already pretty much fully staffed. Okay, terraforming. Excellent, this one turned to Terran, which means Gaia. That's why we have so many people there. We can fit even more joyous citizens here. Um, that being said, I don't think there's much else we can do with this one. Uh, so, I think this is going to be our first system to go to trade goods. Since we don't really have... I can't, I can't afford ships with our command points where they're, where they're at, and I can't get more command points. So we'll just do that for now and have them work on research. The there there's a school of thought that says you should never build, uh, you should never build trade goods. You should always have planets working on like some incredibly expensive project or something to stockpile production and and turn that to things you need as you unlock them. But you know I, that's a little too much of a headache uh, for me. Let's see, this one is tundra. It's rich. I think this one is also time to take it to to take it to Terran. And let's see this. That's yeah. This one has two planets that can be that can do shipyards. Let's get a space academy there because eventually we'll be building ships there. Probably. Problem is with with unification, almost any system can be a shipyard system, so you don't really need to stress about it as much as you normally would. All right, so Eku is ours. Heavy G. Let's. Uh, actually, we've almost got that tech researched. Yeah, we should get that next turn. So I'm not going to bother just microwing a bunch of Bolrathi over there. Darlok's at, oh, they must have bombed that planet. Yeah. Let's see, Darlok still hate us. They are xenophobic, so we're not going to make too much progress in asking for peace. So I think we're not going to bother. You know, chat loves blood. I think we're just going to move onward to start rolling them up after we're done with the Trilarians as our current plan. I mean, they've already started attacking the Trailerians themselves. This is going to bring us into conflict whether we like it or not. All right. So yeah, let's make our... See if anybody wants our armor barracks. Well, Wraith, they have nothing. Archfelt greetings. Give us... Oh, we have everything they have, except for... Except for something we can't use. Fair enough. Oh, here we go. Ah, we have a solution to our... Let's use space coal. It's like regular coal. Like all kinds of inexplicable glowy bits to make it look more sci-fi. And in the, and in Master of Orion 2, it's also purple. Because space means purple in, in this game, apparently. Okay. <laughs> now, the Alkari can actually do some damage with pulsars because their ships are hard to hit. And thus, they're easier to get in close. But our, we've, we got lucky with computer tech in this game. So even if we do go to war with them, I don't think this will be a game changer. Whereas subspace communications will get is the... That's the next tier up on... Yeah, because hyperspace is the third tier. That will give us two command points per building instead of one. Or an extra, extra two instead of an extra, instead of one. And I would just... I could just, like, just zone out that, that music. I love that. And humans, what do you got? Nothing. Do you have anything I want? Oh, actually you do. Hmm... Why won't you give it to me? I'm guessing. Yeah, I think I thought would have thought pulsar would be high enough up in the tech tree. Actually, those those are fairly high end. Actually, uh, range master unit is in that tier with. Um, I think it's the one after the one with with supercomputers. So yeah, what is? I'm tempted to send some spies there, but they're honorable, so they will flip out if they catch me. Hmm. Oh, oh, they're erratic, not honorable. So they might flip out anyway. What do you think, guys? Should we, should we spy on them? Uh, I seem pretty knowledgeable about this game. Is it an old fave of mine? It is. This is my favorite 4X game. I, I play it a fair bit. I'm planning on doing an LP series, the um, the Impossible Stock Race Challenge, at uh, at some point. Okay, so we got transports going. Now we can f now we can finish getting more ships. So I'll let that one go, and then. This one's doing transports of spies. We can do spies somewhere else. 
this is a good shipyard place. So we will do, I think two carriers will be enough. So let's also do, um, let's see. Thing is, if we're going up, going up against somebody with class three shields, we really need to be prepared for them. And uh, mass drivers are good, but I'm thinking we're gonna wanna go with, yeah, I'm gonna wait for the gravity, I'm gonna wait for the gravity thing to finish next turn. Then we'll design something with neutron blasters and, and set it up. Ursa, yep. Yeah, temp yeah, tempting as it is to get grab that ocean world. We're not going to. Oh, here we go again. Mad Emperor Claus versus Hissa of the Sakra. The Sakra are almost always going if they're in play, they're almost always going to be one of the contenders that's based on population. Yeah, stock race Darlocks, worst race in the game. <laughs> but Dar Darlocks are my favorite, so I'm still looking forward to that one. A neutron blaster on board the. <laughs> what Sprawl's referring to is that neutron blasters kill marines. Every five uh, shield piercing damage it kills one marine. So basically, their ships are empty, and you just send your marines in there to board them. Oh, what's this? Are we gonna are we gonna win right here? Oh snap! They they have they have a third themselves, but so do we. Uh, we're not gonna win. That is thirty six votes. That's right about half. That being said, at 19, that would give him uh, f that would give him 41, also not two-thirds. And this would keep him off our backs for a little bit. So yeah, we'll, we'll let that go. It's, it, it's kind of weird to see a game as equitable as this one is. Normally, by this point, e probably you, the player, have gotten a pretty clear-cut advantage. But the soccer were so strong early, it's uh, made, kept things interesting. That... Oh... That's interesting. On the one hand, that's good because that helps us steal from them later. Basically, when it, when somebody gets a breakthrough, and I think this can happen once per game, they automatically instantly finish that field and get every tech in that field. So that could be really good. Okay. Uh, yeah, jump gates are a good thing to bail out on. They are nice. They let you basically get basically reinforce your systems faster, but not uh, not essential. We'll go back to finish our power research now. You have to have more power. All right, Arcosa, then we'll move some people in and to do our, what was our usual field that was robo miners, factory, processor, uh, biospheres, to renewer, to lab, starbase. And then I wait one turn and then rush by the robo miner plant. Nice. I'm not going to spy. Okay, good. So we got some more defenses in there. Uh, have I gotten real any real bad uncreative picks? We, we were we were dire at the start. We didn't get uh, fa we didn't get labs. We didn't get factories. We didn't get um, we did get missile bases. Uh, yeah, we, we got a lot of bad choices, but we did get supercomputer, and that was that was a big uh, that was a big one. So I, I would say it's a mixed bag. Like gravity generator is is probably the best choice in its tier, uh, for example. Well, what are you curious about? What are you curious about, Sprawl? I almost said Zeus, because but you're both green with the S starting in there. The tech level, the one that chooses between deep core mining and eliminates pollution. That's core waste dump. Which do I think is better? Tough one. It, it depends on who I'm playing. Generally, I will go for for deep core mining. But if I have like, like like a unification race that has no that has lots of production already, I might just go ahead and get that one. But since in this game I ended up with atmosphere renewer and pollution processor, and I can probably get nano disassemblers, that's probably enough. So I'm probably gonna get I'm probably gonna grab deep core mining in this game too. Uh, okay, so yeah, we're going to sorry about that. Get distracted with uh, with I got distracted thinking through that question. That's a good question. Uh, let's get cash computer computer first and. Astro University, because we have the people for it now. Terraforming and Battle Station. All right. Right, the other colony base. Uh, let's see, that fits. Actually, what I'm going to do is do one. I said one Clacon. Clacon and one Illyrian. Now it's kind of squirrely. And then we'll just rush that uh, bi the biospheres first. 
and the spillover production will make it cheaper to buy the RoboMiner plant. All right. Let's get them on. I think I might go might get them on terraforming too. They're already yeah, they're already tundra, so we'll just have them work their way up to to Terran. All right. Even better defended now. Yeah, so we have some Bolrathi we can send, but we just finished our just finished our gravity generator, so we're not going to need to send the Bolrathi around. So the Bolrathi are kind of un unessential people. We're probably going to get too many of them. Let's see. That's poor. So we'll do our... Let's make it less poor with that stuff. Let's start base first. We can build it fairly short order, and that's more command points, even more. With that. Then Astro... Uh, how are we? Yeah, we, we, pollution is a, is a factor too. Let's do that first, actually. Oh, with supercomputer too. I didn't see. I didn't even see. I didn't have that one yet. Yeah, always get the more. Always get more research first. And then let's move up Astro University because that helps us with production. Hey, right. uh, gotta love it when you get when you see a system that's all Terran. Let's see, hold in Prime ports. So we're not gonna get the spaceport there. I think they're ready to start on trade goods as well. Yep. Can make troops out of them. Can't, uh, can't make troops. Oh, like making making troops out of Bolrathi instead of your default Marines. Yeah, it seems like quite an oversight because the game tracks so much else separately that you think that they'd do that too. Let's see, this is my ocean system. Ah, guess our gravity generator first. What am I even thinking? Yeah, that first anywhere we can build one, and then. Then if, oh, right, and then since I have my uh, miniaturization now, let's replace the carriers. We've got that one. Uh, well, yeah, I think we'll replace, yeah, Christmas carols. It's a battle pause, battle scanner. Uh, energy absorber. Do we have anything we really want on here? I think we probably not. We could use transporters to get a long range, transporters and troop pods to get a long range bomber. But I'm thinking we probably don't really need to do that. So, we're going to get our Neutron Blasters. They are continuous for even more accuracy. And make them heavy for even more damage, punching through shields. And, well, we still only have five, though. So let me do some math here. That is, uh, through cast three shields, that is one to 15. Uh, average of seven. Whereas a mass driver on auto fire would be nine minus three, six. would be 18. But, it, but it'd be less likely to hit because of continuous. Uh, plus, this is also better at killing Marines. So, I think I will let that go. And, let's see. Are we toss in anything else? We're doing that. Because I would love to do... Uh, I'd love to do enveloping fusion beams. But they're just too... I mean, class 3 shields are where, they, are, where, are where that gets obsoleted. So... I would just do one, one regular Neutron Blaster, too. Can we get two if it'll make it continuous? We can. Why not? More beam. And... Oh, why don't I just make that a battleship? Because I have the tech for it now. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, let's just do... Okay, that'll work. And take that off. Now we can definitely get some extra... Get some extra beam tech there. That's 24 piece. We should be able to do... Yeah, let's do two banks of five. All right, guys, what's a good Christmas movie for this one? Oh, and, and here we are again. So let's do regular Neutron Blasters to wrap that up. 12 would be not quite enough, whereas 8 would be 5 more. There we go. And yeah, that actually works out better because most of your shields should be gone by the time those go through. So we've got that to hit. All right. Let's see. We did A... Hmm, the Christmas movie about... <laughs> Actually, this would be a good one for the Santa sleigh, because we're going to be killing Marines with it. What's a... I guess Christmas serial killer movie or something. Hmm. Let me... The thing... Still Christmas. Oh, I know! What are we even talking about? Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> I think that's going to be perfect. 
And could I get a reinforced hole on there for taking those off? Uh, almost. Yeah, that, that'll do. Because you get so much extra HP out of that, there's no reason not to do it. Okay. So then we'll do our Nightmare Before Christmas. 18 turns, but, the, but yeah, but most of that production should be... I think we're doing extra on food, too. Yeah, that should help out quite a bit. Yeah, that'll help out a bit, and then once the gravity generator takes half that product, yeah, it takes fifty-eight product, gives us fifty-eight production back. Yeah, there we go. All right, so two more transports. Excellent. Send them to Eku. Oh, what's going on here? <laughs> well, what's all this then? Oh, did the Sakura just swipe that planet from the tri from the Trilerians? They're trying to get it back. Interesting. Let's see, that is a Christmas Carol. All right, we'll send it in. It's four, four. There we go. Uh, Zeus, I really like Forex player because of the occasional game of Civ. Because hey, he's the most casual Forex that he is a filthy casual. Well, game of Civ takes long enough, but it's hard to stay interested all the way through. I hear you on that one, especially when you get to the oh, they got a battleship out. When you get to the point where victory is pretty much guaranteed, it does make it hard to, to see it through. But, that, but the thing is, though, is you play these games on your terms. You know, if, if you're getting bored, then you just feel free to stop and or do something to try to rush through the end of it. You know. All right, let's get started on the starbase next. Here, this is about to come under attack. I'm thinking since they just got some capital ships going. All right. Let's see. Nobody else is on my borders. Darlock's pulling back. Darlock's are, actually Darlock's are moving moving there. Try to grab that stuff. Interesting. Okay. Well, let's let's see just for the sake of it if we can get peace with these guys. Oh nope. <laughs> All right. Well, it's worth a try. So let's see. We are yeah we're back on that. Next turn. Oh, we lost some spies. Fortunately, this is why we have spares though. Uh, we got another misfit toys and another transport. All right. Cool. Alright, this one terraformed to Swamp, which is pretty good. Leave it on that, though. But it stops and something else distracts me. It never goes back to finish, right? <laughs> yep, yep. I, I totally understand that. Uh, let's see. That's, let's get another one of those, since we have the room for it. Well, you don't want to go too overboard on beam ships. Uh, eventually, beam ships are, are going to be hands down the way to go, but there are there are justifications for having others, and I'll probably be doing a torpedo boat you know, once we get once we get that miniaturized a little bit. The it becomes his gaming habit. It's very difficult trying to get a long, slow paced game like a 4x or a JRPG. No, I, I I absolutely understand that. Let's see, do I want to refit any of those? I don't think I have any advancements in missile techs, so I think we'll just let, I think we'll just let that ride. That's all fine. I may want to get some more escorts when I, if I fight against somebody with better missiles. But for now, two of them with the mass drivers are doing fine. So, well, this is probably a good time because it's been a couple turns. Check up on our housing pods. Oh, right. I forgot to, to rush build some stuff. I'm not too far behind on that, but... Like spheres. Yep, that was a pretty pretty productive use of my of my cash. Uh, so, let's see, we got the biospheres there. We need to move some people in. Uh, where are our... Okay, there's one. Um, hmm. Yeah, not not optimal. So you do, oh, that's right, yeah, some of those are... Yeah, some of them just got terraformed, which are going to be great for us. As a matter of fact, any of them with high gravity, I should check and make sure that I'm building that first. Like so. Uh, there's one. The gravity. Whoa! <laughs> Not me to rush build that. Okay, that one's already got it. Normal, heavy. Gravity, right. Let's see, normal. Okay. Starting at light, two. Let's see, normal, normal. Heavy, aha. Um, but that, this one's only got Bolrathi there, and it's a desert. So actually, let, let's. Let's get some more Bolrathi on Zayoth. 
and yeah, so then the two of those, the two of those over there. Just so I can, I can keep this production going uh, while I you know, build up enough to then get the get the graphic generator. This one's got low gravity, so let's grab that too. All right. Uh, why is that one so small on people? Let's send some. Huh. I guess if any of my colonies are full, I'll send some there. Okay, not right now. So yeah, we'll, we'll come back. We'll come back to that later after I've gotten some more. Why did I, yeah? Why do I even have a farmer there? That was silly. When I've got some more housing uh, pods going. Right. Now one of them is one of my housing pods was uh, Schwing, which got bombed into bits by the Antarans. That's going to slow things down on that front a bit. I always wanted to see if an assault shuttle ship was viable at capturing Antarans or something. I guess captured one like twice. <laughs> Antarans, pulls explain. Yeah, if you missed it, Zeus, the Antarans showed up, and I'll go ahead and oh, let's get them going. The Antarans showed up and bombed uh, Schwing a little while back, and they, they've had enough of Wayne's World, clearly. And they, yeah, they are a powerful extra-dimensional ship, the uh, extra-dimensional race that pops up within, I think, like two to five parsecs of one of your systems and just moves in with, with fleets that get gradually stronger and stronger as you make it through the game. And that's right, yeah, gravity won't even show up for here unless, until I move somebody else in. So we've got people coming in there. Uh, let's actually, you know, this is a good system and it's close to the border. I'm thinking I'm just going to move my colony ship here so I can send some more people in. But that means for now, let's get enough housing to get one more person, right? And then, then, then the others will move in and then I'll have enough population to start on the other stuff. Yeah, let's get that going to south. Uh, oh, right, I should be... Yeah, this missile base. I probably need to rush build a defense on every system I leave unguarded because the Trilerians have the range and the will to move right in and grab them. Yeah, more like an event than a faction. And if you have them in play with the Antarians attack option, it, it, it unlocks an alternate way of finishing the game. Because SimCity disaster. Right, right. I think they... I don't think... They don't run off of luck. Like, there are, there are actually bad luck events that are more like the SimCity disasters, but the Sakura are starting to... Did I actually gain any points? I actually did get some points with them for that uh, that council vote. Also, let's see if that worked on scaring off their spies. Yeah, it did. Yeah, because we had spies on them and they, and they detected them, they, he pulled his spies back. So now they're not going after me. So pretty pretty convenient, a, 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 a nice life hack. And this one weird tip that the Darlocks don't want you to know. <laughs> yeah, they are gearing up to invade somewhere. And if they have multiple battleships, a missile base won't scare them off. So I may lose a system when they attack. That's why the warp interdictor tech is so useful. Uh, because... Oh, also... And yeah, Spall reminded me about the dimensional portal tech reminds me. Let's make sure I have all of my people assigned. And I didn't. So he is a navigator. Let's put him on a carrier. There we go. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, this guy gives you the dimensional portal tech when we hired him. And so things are definitely heating up in the galaxy. And I, I love this stage of the game. You know, where everybody's starting to build up and start making a play for, you know, for, the, for the end game. And because everybody's built up so much so quickly, this is early for how much stuff we're seeing here. I'm kind of worried about the Sakura making a play for Orion before I'm, I'm ready to. Um, but, as it is, we're just going to let that one more turn go. Nice. So this is what happens. If you're done with, if you're done with espionage or you don't have anything you want, um, then you can actually put your people on sabotage. They prioritize planetary defenses, star bases, stuff like this. Uh, I, I heard of one person, and I, I obviously can't verify it, but one guy mentioned he was playing the Darlocks and was getting bum-rushed by the Silicoids early game, which is one of your biggest fears if you're the Darlocks you're early on because you're, you are very weak and enemies hate you because you're stealing from them. So he did kind of a Hail Mary play. He sent his fleet in, sent his spy to sabotage, and blew up uh, Chris Lon's starbase. So we actually managed to take out their homeworld and, you know, uh, I, I assume led to victory, although he didn't get that far. But just, it's like, yeah, that it, it can happen. 
Uh, so we've got this one's full. Actually, this one's Tundra, so let's move a Klaikon off. Okay. Let's see, and that is, yeah, we'll first finish building that one. Yeah, I'm making a play for Orion, right. Yeah, uh, basically, the first person to become the master of Orion is, gets, gets a special cutscene. You get a you get a colony you get a ship leader a ship officer you get his battleship if you have room for it and you get uh, four you get the you get the death ray and three other techs uh, so it doesn't win the game but it pretty much it wins you the game <laughs> all right that one oh geez okay Sakura Sakura have made their move all right so what are we looking at I'm going to assume they're here to finish off the Bulrathi and not me because they can tell they have no fleet left, but I am not going to take that chance. Fortunately, they're, arrive they're going to be arriving completely out of formation. Unfortunately, I do not have my fleet in orbit. <laughs> so here's the thing, guys. Do we do we let the Bulrathi die? Because this will wipe this will take them out of the game. Uh, or should I declare war first and, and conquer them myself? And then at least they'll be safe. <laughs> Is yeah, the Bulrathi are not going to survive this. And if I stop the Sakura, that means war with them. And when I'm already at war with the Darlocks, this is one of the this is one of the decision points that can cost you the game if you're not careful. And even though I'm not going to be a filthy safe scum, or I will save here, this is one of those you know one of those branching points. So yeah, let me know what 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 you think my move should be, as I make sure that my house is in order. Filling out the rest of my command points, getting my battleships, you know, built. Okay, two nightmares, battle stations. Okay, so we're 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 doing good on on our on our production. Yeah, I'm going to assume they're going to finish off the Bulrathi and not me, but it's hard to take that chance. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at this! So the Sakura have every ground tech, every extra ground tech available, and my gosh. I think they have Zortrium armor too. Yeah, they have Zort and they got class 5 shields. So this is this is starting to look... I, I, ne I need this stuff, basically. I, I have to keep pace with the Sakura, because they're already subterranean. That means they get a plus 10 they get plus 10 defense on defending their systems, too. Yeah, I think we'll leave... Leave some token token spies on sabotage and just go all in on trying to grab those shields. They're only troubled, and I th yeah, I'm pretty sure they're just going to take out the Bulrathi. Yeah, that's, I think that's what they're going to do. That's a tough one. I could probably win if I pulled my fleet back. Was there, guys? Yeah, they're arriving piecemeal. But again, I don't want to take that chance. Hmm. And I don't have. Let's see how. What's on Ursa? Let's see, they're they're gonna take out this one first. Tough one, tough one, tough one. I could, or I could just make demands of the Bulrathi, get some free tech, have them declare war on me, and then take them over myself. Yeah, I think that's the only way that the Bulrathi aren't gonna get bombed to bits. So, <laughs> so let's let's do that, and then the Sakura will probably take over the take over the less advantageous system, and hopefully let leave me with uh, Ursa Prime. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of expecting this, but but kind of not expecting this. You know, one of one of those things. Let's get our yeah, that, that's actually fine. So basis first. Just make sure that the Trailerians aren't going to try to make a move on on this stuff. Okay. Automated factory first. Yeah, we'll do all that stuff. Okay. Welp. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's see what we can get out. Actually, I don't think they have anything we want. Okay, we, though they do. Oh, look at this. Okay. Hmm. This is the one they're probably going to declare a war over. 
It is a 4,500 point tech. That's a 2,000 point tech. They're more likely to part with that. On the other hand, the, they're also more likely to accept, to acquiesce to the first one I make. So... <laughs> okay. Yeah, I feel bad, you know, doing the civil Wraithy, but Mad Emperor Claws, this is the only way to keep them from being bombed into dust. Uh, so... Okay. So, yeah, he, so even then he wouldn't declare war on that one. So we'll declare war next turn, have our, order our fleet to engage and, uh, and take Ursa. All right, let's, we'll see which Ur we'll see if there, if there's an Ursa left. And, uh, yeah, so, <laughs> things just got interesting. Okay, and like I said, I'm, I checked to make sure we have, we have two more battleships being built. And those are the ones that are, are should be good at cracking the Sakura shields. Even more so now that they have class fives. So, I have to be really careful this doesn't, you know, the Sakura don't decide to declare war on me right now with the Darlocks on there too, with with me overextended on new new worlds. So, fingers crossed. Let's see how this how this plays out. Okay. Uh, Sakura have one throwing battleship. Bulrathi have nothing, as we surmised. Uh, we attack there, they have missile base. I thought I moved in more more ships than that. Well, I've already declared war, die is cast, so... I don't think I'm going to win with their Neutronium armor if I only have... What what ships do I have? I can't even check right now. Yeah, I needed, I needed more ships. I forgot to send them. Well, that was kind of stupid. Oh, well. Yeah, we'll just... Yeah, well, yeah, we'll, we'll wait. Like I said, uh, uh, we'll we'll make the formal war declaration. Uh, let that let that be official uh, anyway. Okay. So, want to make a factory, a better plant, processor, uh, biosphere. Actually, but yeah, biosphere is first when we're dealing with a desert planet. Yeah, you want know the drill on this one? Let the spillover production make the rail liner cheaper, and then buy it the following turn. Missile base, radiation shield. When you're on war footing, your your basic priorities change. And then we'll send some people there. Yep, now at war. This could all be for nothing, depending on what soccer ships arrive in the, this following turn. But yeah, I, that was just dumb, and I forgot to send in send in more more ships to make sure I could actually take out the defenses. On uh, on their uh, on their capital. Okay, so Astro University because we yeah we now have the room for it. We don't have the people there for it yet, but we have the room, we have the capacity. So I'll start moving in planets that are filling up and um, and put them there. So we we'll do that one, soil enrichment, and yeah, then terraforming. Yep, sounds good. Matter of fact, let's send in one of them now. And this is coming along pretty well, too. There we go. Old fish one spies. Ah, you're right, my home world. I will have them do... Yeah. Yeah, I need to, have, need to make sure my home world is, is well defended. Okay. So most of soccer stuff isn't arriving until... I can't actually redirect that one. Yeah, I need. Yeah, I think that's the thing. I needed. I needed my escorts there, and I forgot to send them in. I must have like, yeah, I must have checked the wrong fleet, or got distracted and not actually sent in the ships I was meaning to. That's one turn. Okay, so yeah, we will yeah, order to uh, order to attack, and then see. Sakura will have. I'm pretty sure what they're gonna do with their ships is they didn't do anything this turn. They're probably waiting for their fleet to, to arrive. They're probably gonna bomb that one, destroy it, and then go after that one. Which would hopefully give me time to, to grab it first. Okay. Let's also make sure all my defenses are up. And then let's, the Sakura do go to war. Ursa is not going to have room for um, some people in. Yeah, let me check. 
And it was Zeoth, right? That just... It needed one... Yeah, it needed one turn of housing. Yeah, perfect. I think I gave it two turns, but that's all right. And now it should be ready to start building up. Pollution processor. Oh, actually, it actually doesn't need the pollution processor. That's a lot of production. You gotta love the ultra-rich ignoring the, the high G. So yeah, we'll do that first anyway. This because I know it'll, it will be a factor eventually. And then do computer terraforming. Is that arid or is that desert? It is a desert, so we're actually we're going to want to do terraforming first then. Okay. Zoom back out. Take a look at exactly how bad this is going to be. Yeah, they are throwing everything at, uh, at Ursa. Not every, which is kind of scary because this isn't everything. They have more battleships. So I'm a, I am a little outmanned. I don't know about outgunned, but we are a little outmanned. Let's see. Well, I am the strongest, according to this. <laughs> I'm not as strong fleet-wise, though. Yeah, so if we end up fighting both of them at the same time, we're definitely going to be overwhelmed. So... Hmm. Let's see what the Sakura do, I guess. That's really the only thing we can do. If they do end up declaring war on me, I'll see what I can do about getting the humans and the Alkari in on against them. Since you know, we are much better friends. Oh, the humans have phasers now. Interesting. Yeah, the, the humans are democracies. So eventually they will really start ramping up on tech. And normally I would love to start spying on them, but I definitely cannot risk another war. So... Let's see if we can trade anything with them. No. Okay. Well, good to know. Uh, might as well actually while we're at it. Uh, we can't, can't afford to leave. Can't afford to leave. You'd know, be too unguarded against the against the uh, Darlocks there. So yeah, we'll just do that one. Try to grab something from the Bull Wraith before we take them over, and do so next turn. Okay, here we go. They haven't done anything yet. Well, if you can't do anything, and we have our ships in. Normally, I'd be worried about the bull, engaging the Bulrathi in ground combat. As far as I know, they have no special ground techs, just armor. So we should have the advantage. We, we'll be even with them, courtesy of the power armor. I think we'll be enough to actually, actually pull it out.